Acts chapter number 2, verse 1 to 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Happy birthday, church. Happy birthday to the church globally. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and we're so excited that Jesus Christ is still pouring out His Spirit today. We want to welcome everyone to the Apostolic Pentecostal Church of Pickering live stream. We are so thankful that you've joined us today. God bless you, whether you're listening in your home, at work, or in your vehicle, we're just so thankful for you. And one of the greatest ways that you can participate in the service today is easily by dropping a comment in our live stream broadcast. I, I don't know about you, but let me tell you something truthful. When I see the responses of people saying amen and praise the Lord and just shouting for joy, I'm telling you, it is such an encouragement. And you on the broadcast probably are experiencing that same thing. And so we love it. I, I, and, and we know that, you know, other people are enjoying that. So please comment, make sure you do that and participate. And if today is the first day you've ever watched this broadcast, we want to be in touch with you. And the simple way to do that is just go to our contact page and easily just put the information in that is pertinent to yourself. Make sure you leave all your contact details and someone from the church will gladly get in touch with you. As well, if you have any prayer requests or testimonials you wanna share, please leave that in our, comment, in our contact section. We would love to hear from you. Now, something really important I wanna make mention, which is, which is awesome. And listen, all of you who are on the live stream watching today, I'd love for you to share this with somebody who may not have the same access to technology that you might have. You can now listen to the messages on Sunday and even on Wednesday by literally calling our conference line. The conference line number is 905-420-3934. And all you have to do is select the op option number 11 and enter pin number 1234 and you'll join many others as we hear the word of God. All right, well, all the links to what I'm speaking about, they're below in the description. So if you forget anything I said, it's as easy as just clicking that link and, or clicking the description and you'll see everything that's pertinent for the service. Now, in terms of just giving you some updates for the remainder of the week, I'd love to easily just do that with you right now. Hey, listen, we've been having an amazing time in the Word of God on Sundays. Wasn't today just tremendous hearing from the Lord from the book of Hosea? We're so grateful for our pastor and the words he's been, he's been ministering. And so we've had that opportunity throughout on Sundays. And so we want to encourage you to be a part with us. All right. Now, prayer. It's so essential that we gather together. And you know, on Monday to Saturday, we do that at the various times that we have available to us. And the reason we're doing it is because we're trusting God. We're believing God. We're hoping that God will do great things in this season. And so we do that through prayer. You know what? All you have to do is just come onto our conference line. It's option number two. And all you have to do is just dial in pin number one, two, three, four, and you're going to join many other saints in prayer. And Fridays, we know it's special request Friday. So make sure you bring your prayer requests, whatever your need is, to that moment. And I'm telling you, God is going to do great things. It's going to be at the 7 p.m. hour um, on Friday. Now this week, we've got some great prayer, um, prayer services happening, especially on Saturday. Saturday, we're going to have a time before the Lord. And so this Saturday, there won't be any 7 a.m. to 7, 8 a.m. prayer, but we're going to be having another prayer session. It's going to be an awesome time with the Lord. Now, counseling. All right. I know that during this time, there's some people that might be struggling. You might be going through some different things and you're, you're wondering what to do. Listen, we've got counseling available. All the information you need is on the screen and we have someone qualified who can assist. So please, if you're dealing with anything, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we've got counseling sessions between 10 and 2 p.m. All right, we've got a great woman's session coming up on Saturday as well. And so from 6 to 6.55, you can join other ladies as they talk about vital statistics. It's going to be an awesome time with the woman. All the information is available for you. All right, now this is really important, okay? So I need you to tune in, all right? If you didn't hear anything else, make sure you listen to what I'm going to say. Next Sunday, 
we're all going to do something very, very, very special. Look, we believe it's important to encourage each other at this time. We haven't seen people for months at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a safe, healthy little parade. What, do I, what am I talking about? You're going to come drive your cars into our parking lot and we're going to do this in a healthy manner next Sunday at 2 p.m. And we're going to you know, encourage our pastor, encourage our leaders, maybe bring a card, send some balloons. You know what, we're gonna have a great time. And so just keep in mind some of the rules that we have listed. It's really, really important that you pay attention because we wanna do this in a safe manner. And just don't forget, keep your windows up until the procession starts. Now, this Wednesday for Bible study, it's gonna be a special discussion. I know many of you are aware of all of the different things that are happening in our world when, it's, when, when dealing with racism, discrimination, and social injustice. Well, guess what? The church believes that this is a forefront issue that we need to be tackling and discussing as well. Amen. And make sure that we put Jesus in the center of what we do. And so on Wednesday at 7, what we're going to do is have some guest speakers with our pastor and it'll be Tracy Ham Reverend Tracy Hamilton, as well as Frank Ferguson. And it's gonna be a great time. So I need you to share that information to some of your friends, colleagues. Let's get as many people on the live stream or on the phone line listening to what's happening in that discussion. We got youth service going on this Friday. It's gonna be an awesome time. They've been dealing with some really great issues over the last few weeks. Make sure if you're a young person that you're joining on that call. Glow, all the young ladies, hey, don't forget, it's Tuesday night you're going to be meeting. So you're looking for a fabulous time. I know that GLOW's been doing some, some wonderful things. Make sure you're present and you're there at 6.30. All right, reading of the week this week. We just finished Hosea and Joel. We're now off to the prophet of Amos. We're looking for a great time reading the Word of God, 1 to 6 throughout the week. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you, church, so much for the blessing of your generosity. It's been so awesome to see the boxes of food filled for our community. Just want to say thanks so much for all of your assistance and all of your help. Now we're going to be going through a series of chain fasting starting tomorrow. And church, I want to encourage you over the next week to seek God. We need to hear His direction. We need to hear His voice. And so starting tomorrow, we're going to be going through a time of prayer and seeking God. Now, if you are enjoying everything, anything that we're, we're doing, and even if you're not, make sure you follow us, make sure you like, and make sure you press that button to subscribe. And especially if you are a new visitor and you have questions about the service, we've got a visitor's page on our website. It's just for you, geared to you. Make sure you check that out. All right, awesome. Now, we're gonna have a great time in praise and worship at this moment. So I want you to, to encourage you to lift your hands and worship God as we go into a time of worship. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you for the victory. Hallelujah. Oh, I heard an old, old story how a Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. I have victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood and he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me into victory beneath the cleansing blood well i heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see and then i cried dear jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow jesus came and brought to me the victory now i have victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood hallelujah he loved me ere i knew him 
and all my love is due. He plunged me into victory beneath the cleansing blood. Oh, I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. I have victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Hallelujah. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due. He plunged me into victory beneath the cleansing. My Savior forever He sought me And He bought me With His redeeming blood He loved me Ere I knew Him And all my love is to Him He plunged me Into victory Beneath the cleansing blood Amen. Praise God. You know, it's so funny. While the praise and worship was going on, I'm telling you, I'm dancing where I'm at. I don't know about you if in your house you're shouting, you're dancing, you're, you're doing, uh, you know, your, 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 your ways of praise. But I'm telling you this, I was twisting, I was saying to myself, oh God, I need this <laughs> in my life. I don't know about you, but amen. We're just so blessed. We have such a fantastic music team and media team that puts together our services every single week. They do it with such passion and such joy, and we're so blessed to have all of God's wonderful people a part of this uh, broadcast tonight. You know, I want to lead you in a time of giving in this moment. You know, I have never ever thought that giving should just be so prioritized in our lives. You know, in the beginning of this pandemic, God literally spoke to my heart and said to prioritize me when it comes to giving. I'm telling you, that's what the Lord told me. And I have made sure my duty that my family make sure that we participate in giving because the kingdom of God, amen, is the greatest thing in our lives and Jesus is the center of our lives and we know that giving is just a part of what we do. And so I wanna encourage you today to give to the Lord as he's blessed you and as you know, it's your duty as a Christian. We give of our tithes, our offerings and of our donations and you know, you know, if you're new and you don't know the various ways to give, it's easy, it's all on the screen, but you can also check out the links below which will direct you and guide you uh, to all the various ways that we give. And even on our website at apcpickering.com backslash give will give you all the instructions that you need in all the different ways. So right now, go to your mobile phone, Go to your desktop. I want to encourage you right now in this moment, let's spend some time before the Lord and give to the Lord as the Lord has blessed us. I want to remind you, if you have any questions today about the message, um, if you want to make a comment or, or, or anything, I just want to remind you, we've got a visitor's page designated to this that you can literally go and put the information that you need and send us a message. We want to hear from you. We want to know how God has spoken to you. We want to know how God is reaching your heart. I'm going to trust that you have given to the Lord in this moment and in this season. And remember, through technology, we can give 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But I want you to bless God in this moment. And while you're doing that, I want to encourage you to draw your family together because we want to pray. We want to ask God's blessing over tonight's service. It's Pentecost. We're celebrating and we believe in God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the lives of men. Amen. Would you lift your hands with me? Close your eyes wherever you are in your homes and let's pray together and ask God's blessing 
over the service tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are just so appreciative of who you are. Lord, I thank you for the outpouring of your spirit. I thank you, Lord, for the reminder that today is the birthday of the church and we need to celebrate. I'm praising you for the Holy Ghost. Lord, I even remember when I received the Holy Ghost many years ago, and I remember after receiving it, I said there was nothing like the presence of the Lord. And to this day, God, I still concur with that. There's nothing like your spirit in our lives. And God, tonight, I want you to pour out your spirit on somebody. Lord, we might not be physically here, but whether they're in their house or their car, wherever they might be, Holy Spirit, pour out upon men. Lord, let men receive you, Lord, wherever they are. I pray your presence would be with your people. I pray your guidance, your direction, and your comfort would be with your people. Now, God, I pray for your manservant. Would you speak through him? Lord, we're he listening to hear what you're saying to the church. Minister through him like never before. And I pray that, God, the anointing would flow from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. God, as he utters, let chains and forces in the spirit be broken so that men could come to you. Lord, you said if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost, that the God of this world has blinded their minds. So, Lord, I pray that, God, men would, Lord, have their eyes open to receive the gospel today. Lord, we pray your perfect will be done tonight in this season and say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. May God richly bless you. I welcome our pastor, Pastor A. Castro. Thank you, Brother Dean, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So glad you are with us. Thank you for having us in your home with you today, with your family. And uh, I am so delighted that we're seeing the consistency we haven't met in a long time. I miss all of you terribly. I uh, miss shaking hands and the smiles. We appreciate the emojis. We appreciate all the comments and the uh, chat, but it's nothing like just seeing you face to face. But I am praying and we're praying and believing that God will give us the patience uh, during this time. And in due season, we will uh, get to meet. As a matter of fact, I heard that next week is, there's supposed to be a drive-by. And I just want to make sure I clarify that it's a drive-by. You're not getting out of your cars. We're not shaking hands. Um, there should be really no exchange of material as the, the, the uh, outline and the ordinances require. So it's just a, a drive-by to say hi, and uh, I look to see your smiling faces. No chain, all families stick to your own cars, no crossing over from one vehicle to the next. These are not permitted in the ordinance um, if we meet in the parking lot. And so it's not gonna be church by any means. You're just, we're just seeing you go by. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's desperate times and we just wanna see one another. But I'm glad to know that uh, you will be able to swing by and you won't just be seeing me. You're gonna be seeing what I'm gonna call now my pastoral staff or media staff is really our pastoral staff. Without them, we would not be here. And so, amen. Um, we're just uh, looking forward to seeing all of you. But for tonight, um, I want to say God bless you. Gather your family. I really want to say this. Um, we've not met in, in, in congregational fashion, traditional fashion over the past several weeks. But one of the things I don't want us to do, please listen now, I don't want us to take this as a casual time where we plan all manner of activities on our Sundays and, and make church optional because we have the privilege of going back and re-watching. I'd like you to still set aside the day. The first day of the week is to be set aside as what the Bible calls the Lord's Day. And it's a time of assembly. It's a time of worship. It's a time of renewal. It's a time of consecrating first things first to the Lord. It's a time of giving your tithes, your offering. And so what I'd ask you to do is don't make plans, don't plan to go to the beach, don't plan to go visit uh, during the church hour. Plan to be in your place or wherever you are, make that your church for the time. And so not a date, not a dinner date, not a barbecue in the backyard. Make church church. It's important that you consecrate this time to the Lord and set him uh, that day as holy and hallowed for him. 
So put down everything, uh, no eating, not, it's not dinner time, it's not nothing else. It's just time to, for you to set aside this one hour uh, for the worship of God. Amen, everybody? Just like when you'd be in church. And that is something commendable, and God will certainly bless you for that. This evening, and, and before I go there, I hope you are blessed by the word of the Lord this morning. We're so blessed last week to hear a great report of a 10-year-old boy. After the service, he got filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. And uh, uh, we're looking to baptize several this afternoon, one at a time, with only five in the building, limited uh, attendance. But we have souls to be baptized in Jesus' name. And if you are convicted and if you're ready to make the step we want you to just give us a call it's a great church for you to be at an amazing people to be around and uh, it's a good church for you to make your home church so look to hear from you god bless you the book of hebrews chapter number 11 the book of hebrews chapter 11 and i'm going to be going back to a couple of verses that we did uh, we we read last week and we did a message uh, called final arrangements And I had three points to make, and I wasn't going to go back here, but I got um, text messages and calls and um, seeing folks, and they say, Pastor, you really should finish that message. So I'm going to go back to finish this this evening, and uh, hopefully you will have another great Pentecostal experience in the presence of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11, 20 to 21, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph, his grandsons. He, when he was dying, he blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. He blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. Three points I felt were critical. Last week we lifted the first, that Jacob was committed to the practice of transference, transferring blessing, transference of blessing to the next generation. And that, uh, we notice, has some key components. Number one, uh, by review, it had... Words being spoken, prophetic words spoken over the next generation. The elder would bless the younger, the greater, the lesser. Uh, the Melchizedek upon the Abraham, the Abraham upon the Isaac, the Isaac upon the Jacob, Jacob upon down to Joseph's, Joseph's sons, uh, the father to the son. And so there was the greater to the lesser, number one. Number two, words of blessing or eulogy were spoken over the person you intend to see this transference on. Number three, hands were generally laid. There was, an, there was this uh, uh, impartation. There was this imposition of the hand as a sign of impartation and transference. And we see that in the Bible, as for example in Acts 8 and 17, where the apostles laid hands upon seekers of the Holy Ghost and said to them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. But the, third, the fourth thing that I pointed out that is critical to transference was it was not in a church house. It wasn't in Shiloh. It wasn't in Bethel. It was in the family residence. And we are saying to fathers and mothers in your home, gathered right now in this reverential and sacred moment, that it is the right thing for you to lay hands upon your children and speak God's favor over them and believe that it will come to pass in their lives. And so we find in the scripture that, amen, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau, and now Jacob was practicing the same to the next generation. We also noticed not only that was there this, uh, this uh, engagement in transference, but the second thing we noticed was that there was a performance of worship, which we spoke about last week, amen, a performance of worship to God, where the Bible says, amen, Jacob, uh, when he blessed his sons, Bible says, and he worshipped. 
and he worship. And what a, we, we talked about that last week and we indicated that God is not just looking for gatherings. He is not just looking for congregations. God's not just looking for buildings and ornate uh, structures. What God is looking for right now are worshipers and you have the privilege of being a worshiper anywhere you are, in your homes, in your car, wherever you are. God is looking for true worship to, to be given to him. And so it comes to the third point now and how do we do that? Amen. Getting the presence of the Lord and worship. How do we do that? How did Joseph do that? Well, the Bible says in verse number 21, Joseph worshiped, amen, leaning on the top of his staff. And I want to talk to you about the third principle tonight, amen. First was transference of blessing to the next generation. Second was a performance of worship to God. And the third is reference to all your victories in the past. Reference to all your victories in the past. And so Joseph was now old. Joseph was now dying. But Joseph had one obligation that before he died, I must make this final arrangement. I must see to that my children or my grandchildren have the same heritage that I have. This thing should not be in any way diluted. That's why the Bible says again in Acts 2, 39, it, the promise is for you and your children and to all that are far off. Every generation must have an authentic apostolic biblical experience and fathers and mothers and elders are to see to it that you don't leave that to your Sunday school teacher. You don't leave that to your pastor because now you can't come to Sunday school and although we've got Sunday school online, and, but you can't come for us to lay hands. You've got to do that in your home because you want your children to know the God of their fathers, know the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. You want your children to know the God, amen, that Moses called upon that could bring down plagues in Egypt and amen, divide Red Seas and when there was a lack of provision, he could cry unto that God. And God would open heavens and send down blessing. Amen. And satisfy your needs. you got to know the God of your fathers. That when they say cancer or COVID. Amen. You can call on the name Jesus. And believe that miracles will happen. And the vibrations of the spirit will change the atmosphere and the outcome of things. And so we want you to understand. Amen. That in, in transference. Amen. We must not only pass it on but he worshipped before them demonstrating amen that you're not too old to worship you're not too crippled to worship amen he was dying but he was decided I'm going to die a worshipper and I don't know what's dying in your life tonight but I'm letting you know whatever it is that's dying you ought to still give God praise and glory and honor in everything give thanks amen and watch God turn things around or give you the strength to fight and go through what you need to go through and so here was Jacob now old and ready to die and he began to bless and he began to perform worship and the question is how did Joseph do that? What was in Joseph that made this old man that was a dying man what made him get up off his bed? Amen and stand upon his shaking legs and leaning upon his rod and worship. What was it that was in Joseph? Well ladies and gentlemen we want to talk about that that Joseph worshiped leaning on his rod rod. Amen. Because a rod was more than just a piece of support for a falling, failing body. The rod was more than a walker. Hallelujah. To carry someone whose legs had lost its ability and mobility. The, the, the rod was more amen, to facilitate ambulatory purposes. It was, it was in referencing. He was literally referencing, amen, his victories while he was leaning upon the rod. Referencing and rehearsing past victories and experiences when you are in the valley situation is absolutely critical to enrich your worship. I want to say that again. Referencing your past victories or rehearsing your victories when you are in dire straits, it's critical to the enriching of your worship. That's why you can't go through life casually. You got to mark anniversaries. You got to mark special dates. You got to remember Passover. You got to remember Pentecost. You got to remember Tabernacles. You got to 
to remember where God brought you from. You got to remember your personal Pentecost. You got to remember your personal encounters with God because when you get in a valley and you don't know how to come out of it, when you're facing death, you need to be able to reference what God has done for you in the past so that it can boast to you now to face your giants in the present and say, the God who brought me out of that will bring me out of this too. The same God who helped me beat the lion and the beer, oh yes, will bring down my Goliath. So why? David is able to reference past victories. He won private victories, so now he can face public enemy and believe in the same God he met in the past would carry him through into his destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, we are speaking of the rod that Jacob leaned upon because the rod, amen, was more than a leaning staff. It was for referencing. Documentation, amen, refreshes the mind when you're going through a situation, when you've met God in a particular way, you ought to make sure you document. Documentation is critical for the refreshing of the fading memory. When your mind is fading and you're old and you're getting, amen, a little bit not too sharp in the mind, in memory, documentation can make you remember exactly what God did for you. Documentation refreshes and reboots the fading mind, causes you, amen, to, to go back in memory and spring up with gratitude, amen, and give God worship because all of a sudden you can remember what the Lord has done. Have you had some documentation as to when you got baptized? Can you remember what it was like when you got the Holy Ghost the first time? Can you remember the first time, amen, that you felt the hand of God that made you tremble and cry and your tongue and amen quivered and your lips were shaking. Can you remember, amen, a prayer encounter with God? Can you remember a day? Did you did you write it down when you were in trouble and you didn't know what to do but you call on the name Jesus and immediately things turn around. You ought to not trust those to memory. Documentation. Write it down because when memories fail, you need to go back to documents to refresh your mind and rehearse your past victories in order to to refresh your worship. That's why David said in Psalm 103, 1 of 5, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not, underline the words, and forget not all his benefits. What made David's worship so rich was because David was not forgetful of what the Lord has done. He could call back to memory. He could bring it back. He wouldn't allow time to corrupt his memory bank and so he was able to bring back what the Lord did for him and when he could remember what the Lord did he was able to say bless the Lord oh my soul because I have not forgotten what you've done for me some of us are so greedy for things to come and blessings we don't have that we forget blessings past don't forget what God has done it gives you the spirit of gratitude memory supports better worship David begins to document and so he begins to say, Lord, you're so good to me. And then when he began to praise the Lord because of things he remembered, the first thing David remembered was he forgave all my iniquities. I think when David thought about that, David could remember what I did with Bathsheba, what I did with Uriah and all the wrongs I've done. But the Lord forgave my sins and I kind of give God thanks for that. Some of us will only thank God for a better house and we're praying for a better car you pray for a wife, your husband, you got the wife, the husband, and now you don't like that, you're not thankful anymore. But David said, God, if I don't get a husband, if I don't get a wife, if I don't get to drive the car I dream of, I want to remember you forgave my iniquities and you healed my diseases. And that calls for worship. When I think of the goodness of the Lord, he said, when I remember who redeemed me, he redeemed my life from destruction and he crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies my soul with good things so that my youth is renewed like an eagle. When David began to remember those things, he couldn't hold back but worship. Oh yes, and so I want to say to you ladies and gentlemen, don't forget your helper. Don't forget who was a lifter up of your head when you fell down. Don't forget who renewed your youth when you were drained and empty. Don't forget the one who saved you when your chances were bigger than you. Don't forget the one who brought you out of the poverty you're in when you're trapped in the bondage. Amen. Of 
of, of, of Pharaoh. The Lord must not be forgotten because he's a God who makes the way. It's one of the, one of, one of the blights of humanity. We rejoice short for, with short memory and then we forget to go on to the other blessing. And when we forget, ingratitude comes in. When we forget... What the Lord has done in gratitude can begin to fill that space. And because Israel, God knew Israel and Moses knew Israel from 40 years of leading them, when Moses was about to die, Moses said to Israel in Deuteronomy chapter number 8 from verse 11, I'm going to read a little length here. Moses said, beware that you forget the Lord. Can you imagine that? After Israel came out of Egypt, after they saw 10 demonstrable plagues by God's power over Pharaoh's pantheons of gods, when they, they came through, God providing, amen, an escape for them when they were facing mountains on one side and mountains on the other and a Red Sea and Pharaoh behind them and God opened the, with, a, with a rod, with a staff in Moses' hand, stretched it out and Red Sea parted and they got to a dry land and enemies were gone. Can you imagine after 40 years of feeding them manna, oh all the way, cloud by day, fire by night. Their clothes did not become thread threadborn, and their feet did not swell in their shoes. And God protected them from the fire serpent. And after all of that, they still are able to forget God. Oh, I talk about the heart of ingratitude. That's why we need documentation. Beware, God said, that thou forget the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments, his statutes which I command you this day. Let less when you have eaten and are full. Here it is now. When we get blessed and so full of blessing, we sometimes have more regard for the blessing than the blesser. And when we have more regard for the blessing than the blesser, we forget God. And when we forget God, worship goes. And when worship goes, idolatry comes in. So God said, don't forget who brought you out. Oh yes, lest when you eat and are full and that's got goodly houses to dwell in. Go on, let's read. When when the, when, when the herds are and the flock multiply and your silver, your wealth begin to multiply and all that you have begin to multiply and your heart gets lifted up. Look at how blessed I am. Look at how rich I am. Look at how peaceful I am. Look at how satisfied I am. God said, then you forget the Lord your God which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt for, 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 from the house of bondage yeah, who led you through, uh, through the great wilderness. A terrible wilderness. We forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. We need documentation to facilitate richness of memory, to facilitate greater worship. Oh yes, the Bible says when, who, you don't forget the God who fed you in the wilderness with manna. Your father knew it not. Amen. Humbled you. Amen. That may prove you to do you good in the ladder and don't forget the God. Amen. Who brought you out. Amen. And say within your heart my power and my might and my hand has got me this wealth. My education. I put in the time. It was my it was a big break and you forget the God who gave you the mind. It was my cooking that kept me in health and I forget the God who gave you the food. It was my exercise that kept me looking so well and I forget that's God who renewed your youth. Ladies and gentlemen, we've become a forgetful nation, a forgetful generation and it's always, it breeds ingratitude. It kills worship and so you cannot forget what the Lord has done. We need reference points in life to go back to and say, God did it. I couldn't find my way out but God did it. When the bank says no and came through anyways you got to say God did it. When the doctor says it's impossible and God restore your life, God did it. When the lawyer says you never win the case and God calls him to throw it out, God did it. Don't forget how he brought you out. Verse 18 says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee power to gain wealth. He hath established his covenant, swore that he would bless you. In verse 19, the Bible said it very well. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, walk after other gods. I told you, idolatry comes when you forget God. When you don't have good memory of what the Lord did, done, the Bible says you will serve them and worship them. I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. So forgetting what God has done is a recipe for disaster and perishing. A forgetful man will lose his praise. 
A forgetful man will forget the God who blessed him. Therefore, one way to keep your worship alive is documentation, to keep record. One way to keep your gratitude strong is to have a journal. Document what the Lord has done. Stay with me a little bit. I know you may not be understanding where I'm going with this. You need to be able to reference what God has done. Now, Jacob was dying, amen, but Jacob was leaning on the staff, amen, upon the top of his rod. He was leaning and he worshipped, amen. Uh, Jacob was dying, but he was worshipping, leaning upon the top of his staff. There's something amazing about that. Now, let me try to bring you into the light of what I'm talking about. In the old ancient times, according to manners and customs, rods were for more than just, amen, support or for beating off adversaries or beating off wild beasts. While that was the purpose of rod, the rod, but every time you won a victory by beating off a wild beast, every time you beat off an enemy with your rod, Every time you, the rod helped you when you should have fallen and the rod kept you up, what they would do in ancient times, they would get a knife and they'd begin to cut notches in the rod to remind them on this day I should have fallen but my rod kept me from falling. And they notch in the rod on this day when I, when I was attacked by a bear and a lion, I used my rod and I defended myself and I was saved. And they put a notch in the rod. And so ladies and gentlemen, the rod was important for for notification and for identification. Two things, for notification or documentation and for identification. Let me talk about identification first and foremost. The rod, one purpose of the rod was for identification. Now the story is told about Judah after his wife died, amen, he decided he was going to go sheep sharing. And going sheep sharing, it was like going on a business trip. And this businessman was leaving town. He was now lonely and emotionally he was somewhat drained. And he saw this fine looking lady on the side of the street uh, posing as a prostitute uh, and before you know it uh, the conversation amen was uh, they were together uh, and they were they had an intimate time uh, this prostitute said to this man uh, Judah amen uh, Judah not knowing who she is uh, thought it was just a stranger she said you know what you're gonna give me for my service to you and Judah said well I will give you a little kid and the woman said well you don't have the kid with you so what I'd like you to do was to give me a deposit. Give me something to hold on to. Give me a security deposit. And that security deposit will identify that when you, the true person who is with me, when he brings the kid, he can get back all his possession. And so the rod, uh, the, 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 the prostitute got some stuff off Judah. What did she get off Judah? The Bible says the time came when they sent for the, the, the kid for this to this prostitute. He had no clue who she was but when she was brought forth now for judgment because by now she was pregnant and she was Judah's it was Tamar who was Judah's daughter-in-law but Judah had tricked her and not given her his son and she tricked him and got back in the family but Judah had no clue when he gave her I'm talking about soap opera here this is so this is so mixed up isn't it and but 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 here is a story he had no clue it was Tamar but when Tamar was pregnant and Judah was so angry and said bring her here let's burn her with fire and they sent for her amen the Bible says she spoke up in court and said now with a veil off her face because he had no clue he slept with his daughter-in-law he he, he, he called her to court and everybody's ready to burn her but this woman stood up and said by the man whose these are am I pregnant and she said discern court and, uh, and jury whose are these I pray thee if you can identify whose signet ring is this whose bracelet is this and whose staff is this you see what I'm talking about the staff was there as a means of identification and all of a sudden the case was closed ladies and gentlemen I want to let you know this, uh, that the staff uh, was uh, uh, not just for leaning, uh, it was it had identification on it. Everybody knew that the staff was Judah's because Judah had something written on it indicating it belongs to Judah. Why? Because a staff was more than for leaning. It was a record. It was a record. It was there for identification. In the book of Numbers chapter 17, another strife, amen, came up in the, in the scripture. Numbers chapter 17, verse number 2 and 3. Amen. When the, the leaders in Israel did 
they, they wanted to take over leadership. And it happens in churches all the time. Men rise up and think, well, I have the right to lead too. Moses, you're not the only one to lead. Pastor, you're not the only one that God called. And so Moses said, all right, God, what do I do? And God said, speak to the children of Israel. Tell every man to bring a rod according to the house of his fathers, of the princes according to the house of their fathers, 12 rods. And listen now, right unto thou every man's name upon his rod. Please keep in mind, Judah worshipped, leaning upon his rod. Amen. His name was written upon his rod. And the Bible said in verse number 3, Amen. And thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod for Levi. And one rod for every head of the tribe. Now notice, every tribe had a rod and their names were written on top of the rod. Why? Because the rod was to identify the man who owns the rod. Aaron's rod budded and everybody knew it was Aaron's rod because Aaron's rod had his name written on it. So rods were more than sticks. Rod was your iPads. Rod was your iPhone. Rods was your PC. Rod was your, was your journal. Rods was your diary. It was something you write upon. Uh, you're probably you're getting what I'm saying now. Rods were for identification of the owner of the content upon that. Secondly, rods were for documentation or notification. Not just identification, but number two, rods were for documentation. According to Ezekiel chapter number 37, 15 and 16, the Lord came again and said unto me, Amen, moreover, son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it. Everybody say, write upon it. Rods were not just stick to walk with. It was to be written upon for Judah and for the children of Israel and his company. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph and the stick of Ephraim, write upon it. And the stick of Israel, write upon it. Every man's sticker had something documented on him. And I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, amen, a man would inscribe the marks upon his rod. Every time something came down in his life, he would inscribe the thing upon his rod. The name was upon the rod, one. But number two, the writings were upon the rod. It was there as a monumental memory. It was a living memorial. The rod carried information. The rod carried history. The rod carried documentation. Amen. Much like my wedding band has in it the date I was married. So I can't forget my anniversary. It's inscribed in it. Rods were used as a means of inscription to write notes of serious anniversaries or information you don't want to forget. It was much like in the old western days when gunfighters would go to gun battles and the swiftest draw, amen, would kill the man that pulled against him. But every time that gunfighter put the man down, down. He would get his gun and a knife and cut a notch in the handle. Nine notches, he killed nine men. A hundred notches, he killed a hundred men because the notches spoke history of who this man was. And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, amen. Ah, many times I could have been dead. Many times I should have been dead. Many times I was in all kind of trouble and I didn't know how to come out of it. But I want to let you know this. I got some writing, amen, down upon my rod so just in case I forget when I am weary, when I feel like I'm dying, I can lean upon my staff and begin to remember what the Lord has done. And when I remember what the Lord has done, I got to praise him. You don't know why I praise him because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. That's why I praise leaning on my staff. Oh, hallelujah. In Ezekiel's days, they wrote upon the scroll. Moses' days, they wrote upon tables of stone. Jacob said, amen, my writing is upon my staff. Amen. So when Jacob was old and ready to die and worshipped, amen, and his mind was going, Joseph would lean upon that rod. It was a record to remind him of the battles he fought and the victories won. It was a record to remind him when you should have fallen down, this thing kept you standing. It was a record to remind him that this is why you worship. 
life because the Lord has done great things for me. Can you only imagine when Jacob was old, leaning on his staff, Jacob was old, his eyes were dim, his legs were now shaking, his back was bowed, his memory was fading, and when he began to worship, his mind couldn't bring back everything, but he began to lean upon his staff, and when Jacob began to lean upon his staff, something began to happen in his mind. All of a sudden, he began to remember what the Lord had done for him. Brothers and sisters, that's why I don't take the altar for granted. Don't take baptism for granted. Don't take the Holy Ghost for granted. It's to be remembered because when the devil comes in to tell you God done nothing for you, you got to go back to the history book leaning upon your rod and say, just let me remind you, it was the Lord who brought me out when I couldn't find my way. Jacob began to give God praise like never before. And when he began to give God praise, the old fading memory became brand new again with a flood of remembrance of what the Lord has done. I can't forget Sister Lucia Taylor. Sister Taylor was a member of this church for many, many years. Her husband, her family, an amazing family, large family. They're all members of the church. But I remember Sister Taylor lived until 98 years of age. I checked with her family to make sure I got my records right. 98 years of age. About 15 years she suffered from dementia and Alzheimer's. She had this blank look in her eyes. She was seemingly out of touch with reality. She lost her speech. She didn't know her grandchildren. She couldn't even identify her children. But when I would go visit with Sister Taylor, 98 years of age, <laughs> dementia robbed her mind. Alzheimer's raped her memory. But when I got with Sister Taylor and we began to talk about the Lord and I would hold her hand and begin to sing what a friend we have in Jesus. When I begin to sing, it's so sweet to trust in Jesus. All of a sudden Alzheimer's give way to the miracle of memory. Dementia begin to give way to the memory of deliverance. And Sister Taylor will begin to sing and praise because something was written deep down upon the rod of her soul. It wasn't a stick on the the outsider, but the Lord uh, meant something to her, uh, and memory uh, could not destroy it. Uh, the Alzheimer's uh, could not wash it away. Uh, old age uh, couldn't steal it. Uh, and I'm telling you, make memories of Jesus uh, right in your home. Uh, don't let COVID-19 uh, steal your memory. Get the Holy Ghost uh, in your home, uh, right upon your rod, uh, right what the Lord has done. Uh, seek after God. Uh, feel His presence uh, and document it. Reference your victories. Jacob was old. Ladies and gentlemen, he was dying. He was about, amen, to fail in his memories. But Jacob got his little rod. And he started to rub his hand against the top of the rod. And every time he touched the top of the rod, he would feel one of those notches. And he would remember, this is what the Lord did for me. One notch said, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know why he loved me, but the Lord loved me anyways. Jacob run his hand down the rod, and he could remember when he bought the birthright. He rubbed his hand upon the rod. He could remember when he was dressed in goat skin to get the blessing. He rubbed his hand upon the rod. He could begin to remember when he was for his life and laid his head upon a pillar on a rock as a pillar. He saw angels ascending and descending. Jacob began to remember when he was down there with Laban and he married to Rachel. He can remember when he got Leah. He can remember 14 years of labor and slavery. But Jacob said this in Genesis 32 and 10. I crossed over this Jordan with a stick but I'm coming back with a wealthy portion. Brothers and sisters I'm telling you when you can Jacob crossed over with a rock and he came back blessed. He didn't throw the rod away when God blessed him because the rod was his history. The rod was his memory. The rod was his worship. When he was going through the most difficult time, he could lean upon his rod and begin to give God praise. Can you remember where the Lord brought you from? Can you remember what the Lord has done for you? Can you begin to remember how he saved your soul? Can you begin to remember how he brought you out? 
Is it dated? Is it documented? Can you make reference to your victories in the year that King Uzziah died? I told Robosh, I saw the Lord. Why? I got memory. I got the record. I remember what the Lord has done for me. I can't forget what the Lord has done. I can't forget how the Lord has set me free. I can't forget how he opened doors. I've got a Go down and praise him. Run my hand upon my rod of memory and praise my God. It's my history with God. It's my record with God. It's my reference point of victory. I can remember him when I was weak and he became my strength. El Shaddai. I can remember him when I couldn't pay my bills and I called upon his name. And he provided, notched in, notched in, notched in, Jehovah Jireh. When my health was broken, and the doctor says it can't be healed, and the Lord made a way, I got it notched in my rod, Jehovah Rapha. And so, ladies and gentlemen, when you are down and you don't know how to praise, when you're dying, your back is bent, your eyes are dim, and your memory is failing, go back to the rod. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul, my soul, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Jacob had his own staff inscribed from the top to the bottom. And so when he was old, he ran his hand and praise. Moses had his own staff. Could remind him of the ten plagues. But what do you have? God don't need no PC. God don't need amen, your computer. God doesn't need your iPad or your smartphone. God said, I'm not writing on stone anymore. But I'm still writing. What am I writing on? I'm writing on the fleshy table of your heart. That's why I'm so glad I got the Holy Ghost down in my my soul. Take my hands. I got memory. Take my health. I got God. Take away computers. I got God. Take away church buildings. I got the Holy Ghost. And when I remember what the Lord has done, I got to give him praise. Would somebody lift your hands right now and give your God a praise? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, for this is a covenant that I will make with you in, the, in those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws in your heart. Here it is. And I will write them in your heart. I put my laws in your mind. And I'll write them in your heart. And I'll be to your God and you shall be my people. When you're down and discouraged and you can't find anyone on the outside. I said go down in your heart. Look in your heart and remember who saved you. Who delivered you. Ezekiel said it completely differently. Ezekiel chapter 36. 26 and 27. God said a new heart. I will give you a Lord of and a new spirit I put inside of you. Do you have the Holy Ghost this Pentecost Sunday night? Do you have the Holy Ghost when memories fail? The Spirit of the Lord will quicken you again. God said, I will take away the stone out of your heart and I'll give you a new heart. And the Bible said, verse number 27, and I will put my spirit spirit within you and cause you to walk in my law. When God puts the Holy Ghost, it's God's writing. He's writing his love in your heart. He's writing mercy in your heart. He's writing compassion in your heart. He's writing goodness in your heart. He's writing miracles in your heart. When God put the Holy Ghost down in your heart, he's writing his own story. Have you got the Holy Ghost? Then today lift your hands up and say, baptize me and write, O author of my faith, write in my my heart. Tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Ladies and gentlemen, I begin to worship God. When things begin to go wrong, as I begin to reference my past victories, I've got the Holy Ghost on the inside. That's why I can't forget a praise. I can't forget the miracles he's done for me. I can't forget or provided along the way. When men gave up and wrote me off, I got a God that I could lean upon. <laughs> oh, and when he brought me out, I said, I'm not going to forget it. I'm going to put a notch right there. I'm going to build an altar right there. Ladies and gentlemen, I start a worship. When things go wrong, and I begin to remember what the Lord has done, not because I'm standing on my own two hind legs, because sometimes I get so weak that I feel like I'm falling. But Jacob worshipped. 
leaning upon his staff and the staff was filled with notches of memory and I want to let you know today my staff is not some cut down stick I don't have a stick with a carved out head on it I don't have a piece of an oak or maple rod but my staff nevertheless is still a staff that is engraved I got a staff he's full of cuts cuts from the head down to the feet when I put my hand upon the staff I feel all the wounds I feel all the, the, the marks I feel all the engravings I feel all the notches my staff is not a wooden staff he's a real staff and I'm leaning on him my staff that I'm leaning on is not made of wood but my staff he's a rod of Jesse my staff is a branch cut down oh my staff was crucified upon a tree and when I'm down and I don't know where to go I lean on Jesus he was wounded ah for my transgression he was bruised for my iniquities when I'm down and I don't know what to do I lean upon my staff I feel the wounds in his hands I feel the wound upon his head I feel the wound in his side lacerated cut from the head to the feet side was split up feet were nailed but I'm telling you I'm leaning upon my staff why because my staff is my testimony I'm not good because I'm a mama I'm not good because I'm Pentecostal I am not good by denomination I am good because Jesus is my rod Jesus is my staff and I'm leaning on him I'm leaning on him that's why I'm called by his name because my staff has a name oh glory to God my staff's name is that Aaron staff's name is that Judah my staff's name is that money Trump or Trudeau my staff's name is a name above all names Oh, my staff name is Jesus, crucified 2,000 years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, marked up, scarred up, but I was baptized in his name. I got the record that I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I spoke in tongues and I am now living, leaning on Jesus. He is able to keep me. Why am I leaning on Jesus? He's able to keep me from falling. Why am I leaning on Jesus? Because the Lord is my rock and my fortress. And I want to recommend to someone who's falling in depression, going down in anxiety, going down in suicide, going down in and fear, going down in racism, going down in alcoholism. You don't have to go down to the pit of hell. Lean on a rod. Lean on my staff. His name is Jesus and he will bring you out. You can't lean on government. You can't lean on men. You can't lean on money. But the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge Jesus and he will direct your path. I feel like telling someone, I feel victory in the house. I feel breakthrough coming. I feel miracles coming. Somebody is getting ready to find joy. Somebody is getting ready to find comfort in your misery, on your respirator, in your hospital bed, in your prison house, in a loveless marriage, out of job. God's going to tell you, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Thy rod, thy staff. Somebody give God a praise on this. can't lean on doctors, can't lean on education, can't lean on your own memory, can't lean on your own mind, but you can lean on Jesus, lean on his everlasting arms, lean on his nail-scarred hands, because victory is in every wound, victory is in every scar upon his body. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, when you lean on Jesus, men may write you off, put you off as dead, uh, plan your grave because you're old and they say you're dying. But if you lean upon your staff and begin to worship God, there's something that God has more to put in your heart and to bring you through. If I like prophesying to someone right now, because you've been going through a difficult time and you don't know how to come out of what you're in. And I'm telling you, you've tried everything uh, and everything has failed you. But you can now lean uh, on Jesus. 
You're going down, but lean on Jesus. For the Bible says in Songs of Solomon 8 verse 5, who is this coming up out of the wilderness, leaning on her beloved? Who is this coming out of the wilderness? Who is this coming up from the wilderness? How you're coming out, leaning on the arms of Jesus. What am I telling you is this? Jesus was taken in the wilderness too. 40 days and 40 nights, but he came out of the wilderness. And I'm here to tell you because Jesus is coming out of you're going to come out of drugs too. Your children will come out of prostitution too. You're coming out of adultery. You're coming out of depression. You're coming out of fear. You're coming out of anxiety. You're coming out of powers of hell. You're coming out of the bondage of sin. God said to tell you, he's coming out of the wilderness. And if you lean on him, you're coming out too. Someone showed I'm coming out. Someone showed I'm coming up. I ain't going down. I'm going up. I'm not going to stay in. I'm coming out. Would you give God a praise? Lean on your beloved. He's wounded for you. He's got marks for you. He's cut up for you. But he did not stay dead. He came up and he came out. And because he lives, you also shall. Luke 4 and 18. The Bible says after 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus came out. Who is this coming out of the wilderness? Leaning on your beloved. Who is going to leave sin today? Who is going to come out of iniquity and bondage and fear and transgression? Who is it? Who is it? You put it in the chat. Tell the devil I'm leaving now. I'm coming out now. Not because you got power, but because you're leaning on your staff and you can reference his victories and because he conquered your coming out too. This is how he came out and this is what he came to do in your life. Luke 4, 18, after Jesus came out of the wilderness and because you're leaning on him, this is what he said to tell you. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, good news to the poor. Come on now, someone say, I receive it. I receive good news. I receive good news. He sent me to heal the broken hearted. Someone say, I'm healed right now. Broken hearted marriages, broken hearted children, broken hearted spouse begin to declare, I'm, I'm coming out of that depression now because the Lord has sent me to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovery of blind, the sight to the blind. Ladies and gentlemen, I want right where you are right now to recognize that this is your day to come out of your wilderness. This is your moment to leave your bondage. Lift your hands right where you are. Father, I thank you that you have sent your word to this generation. And you've got not only to a transference of anointing, not only, God, a worship of the present, but, God, you can write in the hearts of men and women a history and a destiny that can identify them with you and set them on a journey to come out of wildernesses. Lord, I pray for those who want to be identified with you right now. By baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, deliver them. Break the yoke of delay and bring them out with complete obedience. Bring them out of the wilderness. Bring them out, Father. Draw them. Draw them. We're lifting our hands and we're lifting up a new promise to draw all men to you. Draw them out of drugs. Draw them out of sin. Draw them out of whatever is holding them captive. And I pray that they may come out leaning on you. Savior, I thank you for the memories of the seniors and the riches of their worship. I thank you for the young who shall have a transference of anointing upon them. And the same worship of our, of our fathers shall be upon them. For the promise is unto you, to your children, and those that are far off. I pray now in the name of Jesus for a release of the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is sufficient for all our needs. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Someone give the Lord praise right now. If you are hungry right where you are, feeling the presence of the Lord right where you are, I'd encourage you to begin to pray in your home. Lay hands. Begin to make memory. Make memory this 31st day of May. Make memories this Pentecost Sunday. 10 years from now, 14 years from now, 40 years from now. You can go back and say, I met the Lord at my own River Jabbok. I met the Lord at my own place when I'm running and my head was upon a rock. You can have your own testimony right now. If you want to be baptized in Jesus' name, please do call the number on the line. There are people waiting to minister to you, help you if you don't have a church to say, welcome home, backslider if you want, amen, direction in how to be restored. Just call the number on the screen, amen, and someone will be there to help you and point you to the right direction to make references for victories that will begin in your life today. 
thank you for tuning in. We hope you're blessed by the message. We ask you that you hit the like button. Amen. It's important for our broadcast to reach others. Amen. The more we have online, the better it is. The more subscribers and supporters we have, the better it is for this message to continue to take, take up room and precedence in those who are searching. You must hit subscribe. If you've not yet done so, we want you to do that today. Amen. And you must share this message. It's our means of evangelism. I'm counting on you. Not because we're not meeting here. We must still reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm counting on all of you to use this means to get it out to the world. Share that with, your, with, with all the people you have in your, in your, in your own, um, what do you call that now? Your, your, your own contacts. That's it. Thank you. Amen. Look to see you Wednesday evening in the house of the Lord at 7 uh, p.m. Looking for a great service uh, discussion, I should say. Amen. About the tensions we're dealing with. And you may need to tune in for perspective. Get someone to join you online also. Thank you, thank you, thank you. May God bless you. Have yourself a safe week. And may the Jesus experience stay alive in your heart, you and your children. Love you all. Look to see you soon. God bless you, everyone.